right. Welcome, everybody, to Arizona Real Estate News. Nothing to report, so uh, we'll check with you next week. <laughs> Peace out. Bye. All right. Thanks for watching. So, Pat, welcome back from Wisconsin. Pat, what's my rate, McMaster's? The dynamic duo of Ruby and Jackie of Century 21, Arizona Foothills. What say you today? That's well, where you go. I, oh, 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 okay. Okay. <laughs> I say it's hot outside and it, we need more rain. That's what I say. Do you see well, my I background? Think, it's rain. Yeah. You need, you're, I'm you're, trying to you're will it. Bringing it in by osmosis. So yeah. well, Actually, I'm up here we, in the Northwest. I did get rain at my know. house. I got rain at my house last night and the night before in the, in the early mornings. Well, so. I shouldn't have complained about how cool it was up here because revenge came quickly. It got up to like 92 the other day, which is 92 wow. with 50% humidity. So it got suddenly very sticky. And uh, yeah. so I'm trying not to complain about it, but uh, speaking of complaints, uh, boy, we're going to touch a little bit on interest rates today, but I want to show that, how our market is. And I've, I've seen it in other articles and posts, they describe it as just frozen and nothing says frozen, like active listings. I mean, look, they're just flatlined, not moving at all, not seasonal, not daily, nothing. They're just staying. It, it always amazes me how you can reach a number in both sales and listings and they stay at this one spot. And, I, you know, it's like, you know, we have 2,700 contracts every seven days and it just stays there. In fact, when I look at the seven day moving average, again, look how it's just flatlined over mm -hmm. here on the right. Now, the red arrow I have here is last year. Notice how our new listings came up the past two days. Um, they did last year as well. So when I looked at it, I thought, holy cow, here we go. But. On last year, we flatlined as new listings came on and then new listing, new contracts, I mean, came up and followed it when they met here. And then we started seeing pricing, you know, going back up again because the lines crossed here. I don't see that happening here. I see this actually coming down if rates stay where they're at. And then the other thing I noticed this morning is the Cromford Market Index. This is the daily is coming down to mm -hmm. be expected because you know sales are are way down but here's the interesting chart <clears throat> i want to talk on this and then pat i want to float over to you and find out how bad we're getting beat up today but this is housing affordability index percent of disposable income there's a couple of real standouts here one that says see now my red pen um is giving me a fit here. Let's see. I really want to circle this, but it's not going to let me. Oh, well. Where it says U.S. latest is 23%, pre-COVID 10-year average was 14% as, a, as an index. And pre-GFC, I don't know what that peak is, um, what GFC means. Um, I don't see it up here. But anyway, it's 26 But Look at around the world here. I mean, look at New Zealand, 56%. They've always had a high average, 35% here compared to us at 23. We're kind of like that old saying, we're the tallest amongst midgets right now. So we're at 23. The closest one to us is Sweden at 27. So internationally, everybody spends a lot more of their income on housing than we do. But hey, Rick, before you leave that. and Yeah. Maybe you're going to point it out, so I don't want to talk ahead. Just don't leave that, because I I saw this, too, and I thought something was just unbelievably crazy. But go ahead. I'm sorry. Well, it look at the right. This is the one that's interesting. It's going to be a – and I got this from our friends at BAM, and you you helped me find that that site for real estate agents that are out there. Um, look up BAM on uh, YouTube. They do a live show every morning at 730, and, it's, and you can – subscribe to them and you can have access to their chart. So it's pretty cool. But here is adjustment required to pre-COVID average force affordability. This will cause some debate. In other words, this is saying to get to the that number we see here, which is 14, house prices would have to come down 41%. Income 
would have to go up 69%. Mortgage rates down 4.3. Now, not the combination of all three, just if, if income stayed here and mortgage rates stayed here, then prices would have to, have to come down 40% to get us back to that 14, right? Or income would have to go up 69% to get us at 14. Or somewhere meeting in the middle. Income goes up, prices come down, and mortgage rates come down, which is probably a more likely scenario. But the timing of that, who knows? But I thought that was a very interesting chart. And if anybody wants that chart, uh, shoot me an email at rick at rickhelps.com. Be happy to send it to you. So anyway, so we lost Pat. I hope to get a deep dive into the uh, market, but we're going to go live tomorrow at 930 in the morning. And, uh, you know, rates have jumped up here. If you take a look at Mortgage News Daily, they're showing us, check this out, at 7.37. And when I go to their news tab, they got a headline that said something like, okay, rates, explain yourself. <laughs> <laughs> so, but do you have any buyers out there where this has knocked them out of the saddle this week? Not this week, but a couple weeks ago, once we got up, well, we were up to like 7.14. I had three buyers suddenly that were actively looking and decided to extend their leases six months. And so, yeah, I mean, it's having an effect. You can't blame people, you know. Um, I've got buyers that I'm working, but this is the other issue I'm seeing. And I was talking to um, a girl earlier today who's another lender. And um, I've got clients that are specifically looking for new builds with buy downs. And, and, you know, there's a few out there, but the buy downs are disappearing. And so what I'm seeing with the builders, the builders are tightening up. Um, they're starting to reduce commissions to agents again because they think they have a hold of the market. But I don't know that they realize, forget the commission part, the part that was driving the market with the new builds was the lower interest rates, the 4.9s, even you know up to five and a half. And those blocks have run out. They buy those blocks of money in the beginning of the year and they're running out. And so very few of them have it. But the builders are starting to kind of get back to their COVID attitudes again. And I think it's going to bite them in the butt because what was driving the new builds was that lower locked interest rate for 30 years. So they're looking at lagging data, not leading data. Mm -hmm. But their right. stocks are going crazy. I just put a buyer under contract last weekend. Um, they were 5.99. Um, we thousand dollars off the sales price. Um, and, uh, I mean, I don't know. I think it might be just which builder you're going with. DR Horton's still, um, real strong out there. Lennar's still strong. So there are some builders that are lagging and, and starting to kind of take back from us a little bit, but there are others that are still holding on strong. Well, you, yeah. it seemed like you were seeing it across the board before that almost every builder had some specs. And the majority of the builders were offering the lower interest rates, but aren't you noticing that it's less and less and it's harder to find? Well, I think it is less and less. Um, there's so many builders out there though. I don't have a lot of new build buyers I'm working with right now. So for me, that's, um, I need to do a little bit more research on that. Well, it could be that the majority of them, um, you know, only had a certain amount of money set aside for that. Like you said, Jackie, that pool of money is gone, but the big ones have probably still have enough left and they're, they're buying down. But I mean, you know, to go from 7.29 down to 4.9 is, is a pipe dream. That's not going to happen. Um, no, they can probably no, get, down and get you down to six and a quarter. Mm -hmm. So, but that, even that wasn't attractive. I mean, it's uh, uh, cause they really haven't adjusted their, their prices. Um, so I think, you know, as we look at this, I mean, I, I'm not, I don't want to go down the rabbit hole of how high interest rates are going to go up because we could talk about that all day. But whenever rates start to move up, even if it's a quarter of a point, here it comes, oh, we're headed towards 8%. Here it comes. Um, there's certainly a scenario that says that that could happen. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they thought with the CPI report that, you know, we would kind of stay level and that the Fed would probably 
stay put. Now they're getting edgy that maybe they'll they'll go up again because I'm not that confident that inflation is going to stay down. And mm -mm. Uh, one of the reasons is this, and this is M2 money supply. Um, this is the velocity of M2 money supply. And see down here where it's going up? Mm -hmm. This is, in other words, nobody was spending any money here in 2020. And then we kind of muddled along to Q1 of 2022. This is going up. Mm -hmm. And why is the velocity, the amount of money being spent, why is that increased? And I think that's what bond traders are looking at saying, you know, if we keep spending more, if there's more money still in the economy that's turning along, you can't expect inflation to, to come down okay. right away. And therefore, you know, the central banks aren't going to, aren't going to lower the rates. And plus, you know, there's a lot of people holding short-term debt at like, you know, 2% that are probably going, well, why don't I buy some of this debt that's going to pay me, you know, 5%. So, there's a big right. march for that. That's a complicated, you know, bonds are confusing as hell. I I don't even try to get in there and understand that. But I um I'm not seeing mortgage back mortgage bankers association says, um, and they haven't revised it yet, but that we'll be at possibly five point nine by the end of the year. I just don't see it. No. And and there's several analysts that say that, that that are kind of all in that same range. You know, the thing is, is the spread, you know, the spread, we should be at five and a half, but there's so much volatility between the banks and the debt and everything else going on in the world that that spread is just still staying so far apart that I, I'm, we're going to have to have a recession or massive job loss or something like that to get down to 5.9. Any time. Well, again, go, recession. Go. And again, what, going back to this chart, you know, I mean, it's got to be some type of a combination between these th three factors right here, the mm -hmm. 4.1, 6 69% or minus, you know, 4.3 on the rates. So, so minus 4.3, you know, that's not going to happen. We're not going to go from 6.2 to 4.2, right? Mm -hmm, right? So if we did go 4.2, then we'd be down at the pre-COVID 10 year average of 14. Well, that's, you know. I don't see it. <laughs> My income's no. not going to go up almost 70%. So that's unlikely. So I would lean more towards house prices adjusting, uh, which is expected, but I don't know um, how far and how long, uh, except to yeah, say but... that this is probably the beginning of a new cycle, but I think it's also pretty much what the end of this year is going to look like. I think we're going to stay right here. I think our rates right. are going to muddle along at this range and we're going to see our sales, which went down to 2,600 over the next seven days from 2,700. I think that's going to really be low in November, December. And then you're going to see the CMI pop down and then we'll just see what happens in January. Everybody always waits for January, right? Yeah, they sure do. I so. just don't see a lot of price adjustment because of it, I mean, we are getting more listings and Ruby's taken several new listings, but I just don't see the prices really coming down maybe 10% because we're always going to have, especially Phoenix, we have so many jobs coming here. We're always going to have divorce, death, uh, marriage, children being born and jobs. And so there's just enough with the little bit of inventory we have that I don't, we're not going to come down 41%. I don't see the market crashing. There's just nothing. No, I don't see that at me. all, but I see, you know, on a seven day moving average, I mean, we're sitting at 74%, 74% homes go under contract versus new listing. When we got down to 67 to 65%, we saw price declines. So mm -hmm. we're trending that way now on that average and the Cromford index is trending there. So I think, it's very probable between now and the end of the year that on a month over month basis, we'll see negative appreciation. And we always do. And this not, in the not third, much. third, no, not much, but the fourth quarter, I mean, I always tell people, if you want to buy a house and find a good deal, buy it. But after Thanksgiving before the new year or before the second week of January, but yeah, we yeah. we're always going to have some kind of reduction in the last quarter of the year. 
I think we I could think see we'll be a down 10% to the, decrease. Well, we could be down 2% uh, um, October, 2% November, and 2% December. And that would be a pretty hefty move mm -hmm. um, that would put us into the new year down about, you know, 9% for the quarter. I think that's not a stretch. So no. I'm not going to bet a dollar on it because I'm still <laughs> pissed off about losing a dollar to Pat. So, you know, it's just, I'm, I'm not a betting man. And when I do, I lose. So but, <laughs> but we'll continue to track that number. And I think, you know, again, nothing's going to change unless inventory is as low as it's, well, it can still go a lot lower. We're at 10,000. I mean, last year we were down to, you know, down here in the 7,500 or two years ago, this was 2022. So I don't see anything that's going to make us spike up this way, right? No. Okay. No. And so how can we have the losses we had last quart last fourth quarter if we don't have the inventory? This this would have to happen. Right. And it's it uh and last year it happened right right around March and started climbing up like crazy. We're still flatlining. So if we just stay right here for the rest of the year, then prices could remain flat because we have enough volume to to gobble it up. So this is this is the number that has to go one way or the other. It's got three mm -hmm. scenarios. Down, sideways, or up. So it all depends on uh um if interest rates go up farther, that isn't going to increase inventory. No. It's actually had an opposite effect. Sales, they're already sitting down at 2600 <laughs> per week. How much lower can that go when 2700 is already the historical bottom. So I like, again, you know, here we are, this is where we'll be. <laughs> so we'll be, we'll be staying there for a few weeks and, and uh transactional volume is going to be very slow for lenders mm -hmm. and for real estate agents. It could continue to be uh Q4 really rough. In fact, the president of Redfin is warning real estate agents, 2024 is going to be a tough year for you. And not really matter where prices are. He's just saying transaction volume is going to be so low. Uh, you're going to have to work your butt off to get a slice of that pie. So um, that's, and I agree with that. So yeah. we'll see what happens. You gals won't be slow because you work your butts off. So it's just <laughs> the way it true. works. That is well, true. Well, Pat will be back tomorrow at 930. He just got back from Wisconsin and he is having connectivity problems. He's got Verizon 5G. For those of you that think that that's just a great thing to have at home, I vote no. Um, so you have to reset that modem every once in a while to get your speed back up. So, and I don't think he did that this morning. So other than that, look, ladies, thanks for joining me and have a great day and a great weekend. Thanks, Rick. You too. Thank Bye, you. Bye.